years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminists failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminists we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're supposed it to was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. And welcome to The Talk, I'm Ian Collins. Tonight, the OK for JK. Police clear Rowling's trans comments after she dares officers to arrest her under draconian new hate laws. Plus, Team GB is accused of butchering the Union Jack in its diverse pink and purple rebrand. And from Tenerife to Tenerife, it's trouble in paradise as locals go to war with sun-soaked, burger-chomping, boozed-up Brits. Joining me on the panel, none of the above, Ed Vasey, Emma Wolf is here, Esther Kraku and James Glantz. But first, in the past hour, police have announced that J.K. Rowling will not face legal action over her trans tweets, despite provoking a flood of complaints. The Prime Minister backed the writer after she dared officers to arrest her over her controversial comments about Scotland's divisive new hate crime law. The Harry Potter author took to social media to hit out at the Hate Crime and Public Order Act, which came into effect on Easter Monday. In a series of tweets, Rowling listed a number of high-profile trans women before calling them men and goading the police to take action, writing, arrest me. Rishi Sunak applauded Rowling's comments, saying people should not be criminalised for stating simple facts on biology and that his party will always protect free speech. Scotland's new law creates a new crime of stirring up hatred relating to protected characteristics such as age, disability, religion, sexual orientation, and transgender identity. But critics, including Rowling, claim the law could be used to stifle free speech with anyone using the wrong pronoun for a transgender person facing jail. The Education Minister, Gillian Keegan, echoed the views of the Prime Minister, branding the new law a terrible bit of legislation. People shouldn't be criminalised for um, just stating biological facts. And... You know, it is. it does seem odd that um, I think one of the ministers in Scotland said uh, that you could be arrested for misgendering. And I'm pretty sure that the police in Scotland, as are the police in England, should be much more focused on fighting crime uh, than policing people's thoughts. Um, so this is, I think, a terrible bit of legislation. It's not something we'll be introducing in this country. Well, meanwhile, Talk TV's very own Julia Hartley Brewer voiced her opinion on the new law while sporting a women definition top. This is what happened in China under Mao. This is what happened uh, under Stalin as well. People forget this is what happens in, in North Korea and elsewhere. This, this sort of mind control, forcing people to state things that they know are not true, is part of how you kind of break people. The problem, the problem, as I see it, with this legislation is that much of the sort of hate, you know, racism, um, homophobia, all that stuff is already illegal if you, you know, take it to nefarious and, and, and horrible places. Um, but this is, it sounds like a group of, and I, I don't say this just to be mischievous, a group of sort of ultra left wingers who've decided that they want to go further, that anything that upsets somebody particularly if it's about an alleged minority group. And I don't think that everybody within the gender debate, because I think it's a gender debate rather than a trans debate that's, that's where the, that those kind of grey areas where the, the problems have arisen. Transgender people have lived in this country without much controversy forever. And no one's 20 years of doing phone-in shows never debated a trans issue once until about half an hour ago. And now it's almost on a daily basis. But that's not because of transgender people, that's because of people sort of hankering after this curious gender spectrum and there's 120 different genders, no, there's not. And I can be called non-binary, fine if you want to, but it doesn't mean anything. And the idea that I might question that means that I would get arrested. But those legislating, the SNP in particular, lo they love all of that. Well, non-binary, it's another minority group. If you say anything well, the, against the thing them, is then you're a bad person, you should go to jail. 
some, some groups are obviously going to be more targeted than others when it comes to this legislation because it's completely unworkable. Let me give you an example. So I can say that India Willoughby, who actually uh, J.K. Rowling uh, quote tweeted because she tweeted at me, abu well, he tweeted abuse at me t t saying that I'm a nasty female dog and that I wouldn't get anywhere in my career if it wasn't for all this no woke nonsense. <laughs> um, but I could say, oh, uh, uh, India Willoughby's Adam's apple is showing, and then the Scottish police could approach me, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, it's a cultural thing, I'm gone in, you know, this is how we speak. And then they wouldn't arrest me because they'd be arresting a black woman for set speaking the truth. And then effectively their heads would explode because they're like, oh, wait, she's not a straight white man speaking her mind, but we can't arrest her because, because, because oppression. And it, it's completely unworkable. And it, it's illiberal, and it's, it's, it's actually, this is probably the best argument for the failure of devolution because you shouldn't be able to have free speech in England as part of the United Kingdom, but then go to Scotland and then face arrest for saying something that is objectively true, right? So, I, I mean, it it's, just, it's, it's just not it's, going it's to It's Orwellian, it's Orwellian. In fact, George Orwell couldn't make this stuff up and I don't even know where we come. I do feel, and I support JK Rowling, and obviously she's absolutely right about, you know, describing biological sex accurately should not be criminal. It's ludicrous. But I also wonder, I feel as though she's, is she deliberately, is she starting to sort of be a bit of a trans beta? Is she being deliberately provocative and, and possibly offensive well, at this stage? She's, she's, she's actually, facts. I know she's making her point, but she's I feel She's making as though, a point to protect a lot of other people, and she's saying, I can afford it, come at me, because they will go for weaker targets. I think what's really telling, though, is look at which other parties backed the legislation. And I think what's happening in Scotland, the, the devolution is a crucible for hard left ideas mm -hmm. that Labour would love to implement in Westminster when they get to power, but they're seeing how they go down north of the border or in Wales. And, and if you look who voted for it, it wasn't just the SNP. I'm pretty sure that Labour backed it. Sefta, Sef, the Greens definitely backed it. Yeah, so oh, yeah. It of gives course. you an idea. Well, the Greens would back something like that. Of course, of course. but it gives you an idea of the direction yeah. of travel of Labour. No, I mean, I think we have had, to a certain extent, hate speech legislation in this country for years, as you pointed out, Ian, uh, race, hate, homophobia and stuff. And I haven't studied this uh, law, but it does smack of uh, Orwellian stuff. I mean, it is bizarre. Uh, and it is the trans debate has become all pervasive. Uh, this unbelievable culture war. And as you say, Ian, people didn't talk about this stuff Not two, again. three, four uh, years ago. And it's just been weaponized for reasons that I really cannot fathom. I do, I do sympathise with what Emma said, that maybe J.K. Rowling has now become so embedded in this debate that she almost kind of goes almost over excessive. the top. The interesting thing about what has happened about this round today, by the way, just in terms of the broader political spectrum, is this suits Rishi Sunak down to the ground. I mean, the Tories do like uh, a good culture war. <laughs> this is an issue that they think they are absolutely on the right side of. And just, than, just the, the final interesting war. point from J.K. Rowling, of course, she's a massive donor to the Labour Party, and Keir Starmer has tied himself up in knots when asked consistently, can you please define a woman? Yeah, yeah. But it's more than just a culture war. I mean, over 70% of, of trans-identifying prisoners in prison are there for sexual offences. Yeah, exactly. She's actually drawing attention to oh, yeah, real yeah. issues. That, I mean, she's not... She's, this, is, this woman, I, I hate to remind everyone, is... A, a, was, a, was a victim of domestic violence. This is something that's very near and dear to her mm. heart. I, I understand the temptation of parties to weaponize it and to try and use it as a culture war to try and get votes, I get it. But actually, let's, let's speak about the humanity of this because there are genuinely many women and girls in this country that are terrified that the, the actual definition of being a woman is being erased. And now, for example, we have in Scotland cases of, of male rapists going to female prisons. This shouldn't be a political issue. It should be a human rights issue. Absolutely, and it's a very common sense issue. You know, if you are... A biological male, you should not be in a women's prison. If you've had a puberty as a biological male, you should not compete in women's sports. You shouldn't be allowed access to women's uh, changing rooms if you're a biological Basis. male. If you want to be called they, fine. As a matter of politeness, I'll call you they, but, you know, please. But does, doesn't that feed in, though, Ed, to what I said uh, at the beginning, that there is there's two, almost two debates here. There's the trans yeah. debate. I mean, there, there are trans people in this country who have lived... You know, whatever somebody thinks about Jan their, Morris, the famous travel yeah, their, their bio, whatever the biology, ago. have lived for decades and nobody has bothered. But you anybody. say that, but and we're not trans. I know. But, if, but then there's somebody like Isla Bryson, a double rapist, who halfway through a trial suddenly yeah, says, exactly. "Oh, by the way, I'm a girl." But that's well, the clearly point. you're not. Nobody, that's not nobody, the same nobody, thing. And is doing had the a, entire tran transgender totally. population nobody a had huge a, disservice correct, when she correct. does that. Nobody had a culture war over Jan Morris transitioning. From being James. Well, Jan Morris wasn't trying to force her way into women's changing rooms, just saying. Okay, just saying, from Potter to Plots, rebel backbenchers are scheming to install a Liz Truss style leader to replace Rishi Sunak in the wake of an election drumming.
despite her premiership being outlived by a lettuce. The Popular Conservatives group has reportedly devised a cunning plan, I kid you not, which they hope will ensure a free market libertarian wins the next Tory leadership race. Titled 70 by 70,000, the plot reflects the need of the backing of 70 MPs and 70,000 party members. Incidentally, the number 70 implies that there'll only be 140 Tory MPs left after the election. <laughs> That's compared to the 364 elected in 2019. Sources claim the current popcorn favourite is former Home Secretary Priti Patel, <laughs> who will be endorsed by the group when Sunak bows out. Meanwhile, Truss has continued to defend her 49 days in office, claiming she was not given a realistic chance to enact her policies. Well, the laughter you heard in the background was Esther Kraku. It <laughs> may well be reflected by many other people on this panel because, obviously, it just kind of defies belief. Uh, I think I was accused on yesterday's show of being blind and delusional. Still laughing well, at you, you on yesterday's <laughs> show, saying that 98 seats was really good because it, it, gave, well, you the pop it gave you a solid... The pop cons it gave think you we're going to get... Number, pop, it gave you a solid number to cons, start from. The or pop to... cons think we're going to get 140, so that's an <laughs> that's improvement. A, but, go. I mean, I do think... I mean, I, I have to say, I am full of admiration for Liz Truss. If you open the dictionary and look up the word chutzpah, it will say Liz Truss. She's about <laughs> to publish a book saying 10 years to save the West. She's been on an American speaking tour explaining why her policies uh, were the right policies. And I have to say, a lot of the pop cons, they were never Tories. They weren't Tories when I was knocking on doors no, no. 40 years ago. It's always the converts and the ideologues who come to a political party and destroy it. But, and, but um, Ed, and destroy why, it. Why don't the... I mean, it's, it's that classic... I, I don't know, what's, what's the name for a political party killing itself? It must be a yeah. side, something yeah. side. Harry, 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 yeah. Harry, Harry Curious? Yeah, but there Parasite. must be a very specific, you know, word in the English. Politicise. But the point it's is, I mean, it happened, you know, it happened after uh, Major was elected out. There were two or three leaders that they gave it a go, eventually settled on uh, your good friend, our current um, Foreign, Foreign Secretary, David Cameron. Um, and that, that worked, and that will always work for the Conservatives if you govern from that place. However, I get it, there's, another, there's an appetite for something more. Well, let the Reform Party be the Reform Party, and all those Tories that are looking for a, a, a Trust-esque kind of person go to Reform. A lot of our viewers and listeners say, you know, Reform is the people I'm going to vote for, so it's a democracy. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Let re Reform be Reform, let the Conservatives That's be just... Conservatives. James, would that work? That, well, I mean, look, the Conservatives are in this position just because they didn't bother enacting their manifesto. Mm. You know, they've raised taxes to unbearable level levels. Yeah. They have given us the largest levels of immigration in history. And it says they were going to introduce an Australian point system uh, and reduce levels of immigration. They've not done that. None of these things are particularly r right wing. They're just delivering on traditional conservative policies. And what that's done by not delivering on those, it's created space for Liz Truss and people within the party yeah, to yeah. say, look, we're not conservative anymore. This is what we stand for. And they're trying to see off the threat that they see from the Reform Party. But the reality is, I don't see the what they call the mainstream or the centre conservative party of being I mean, that's a really good point, anymore. Ed. You're, as a conservative, former minister, you've served, you've been an MP, you've pounded the streets, you've knocked on the doors, etc. How does that... I mean, what James just said is factually correct, isn't it? I mean, there's nothing particularly right-wing about saying, I want to solve immigration and the Australian point system. That's not a rabid right-wing ideology. That's no, I mean, look, there are, I mean what, wait, let's not get sidetracked into specific policy uh, debates, but, you know, there was this thing called the pandemic, for example, which has completely screwed the uh, economy. And, of course, you know, the Brexit that James and his colleagues delivered has also completely screwed our economy. So there's some irony in the Reform Party saying uh, you've raised taxes because the economy's screwed. Oh, by the way, we campaigned to screw the economy by taking us out of the single market when we promised you you'd stay nonsense. in the single That's market if you left nonsense. Europe. Not, Let's have a there Brexit are plenty, debate. There Come are on. plenty of videos out there of your mates going around saying we would stay in the single market if we left uh, Europe, and we didn't. We left the single market. I mean, look, it's been an absolute that disaster we have, we have for our disaster economy. So it's always Tories. ironic to hear the reform Ed, people say Ed, that the Tories aren't really Tories when really none of the reform of the people Ed, have Ed, ever Ed, been Tories Ed, in the what, first place. Well, you say this, I'll tell you what. I am a member of the Conservative Party. Well, that is very worrying, because you were a Brexit well, well, MEP. It, I noticed none of but this... But you're not a reform man, though, are you, by any means? No, I'm... You know, I'm not sure who I vote for the next, the next election, but I have been a member of the Conservative Party for most of my life. I joined because they elected a disaster of a Prime Minister in uh, Theresa May, 
who was uh, re refusing to deliver on the will of the people. And then the actual execution of uh, Britain leaving uh, the EU has been a complete disaster yes, under the Tories. But it's not just Brexit broken promises, it's across the board. The Conservative Party has let down the people that voted for it. And that is why, and this... talking about 70, 90, 140, that's why the pe people feel incredibly let down. They do, it's they not feel a Brexit debate. Let down. And you've got to look at the Conservative Party and admit it is a total catastrophe at the moment. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's ideal. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll see, Ed, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, the thing is, is the, the thing is, Ed, yesterday and today, you've been laughing about this, and, I, and I'm laughing along with you, but it's actually not funny, and it's actually, the country is in an appalling state. I know, I you know I agree. You, you agree with me, you do. I know you're not allowed to, but you do agree with me anyway. This is, <laughs> I no, but to. I mean, Why as a, as a, well, as a conservative here. We're not here. laughing, because <laughs> you're the yeah. lords as well, because you don't have to face the election. Exactly, That's true. exactly. We but, can't but even vote. But it's quite serious, the, the state of this country. It really is from the, from the no, kind of state of the roads to the state yeah. of the NHS, to the state of immigration, to the state of our borders, to the state of old people, to the I state think we're of looking at a mid young people economic collapse. riven with mental, mental health and everything. And actually, what the party's been doing is obsessively breaking up oh, into yeah. smaller and smaller factions and arguing about new leaders. Yeah, yeah. And it's no, like, it's so guys, depressing. look at what is actually happening it's in the so country. It's so depressing. And, and like James, I want to vote Conservative and I genuinely don't know where to vote at the next election. And that's a really, really sad place to be. Yeah. It's even worse that you say that it's embar you're worried that I'm a member of the Conservative Party. You know, well, no, you hate your voters. That, 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 you every, hate everyone everyone I've known who's damaged the Conservative Party have been people who've come from a, an ideologically extreme position and joined the Conservatives. They're not natural Conservatives. Nonsense. Bring back Ted Heath. Coming up, sports fans lash out at Team GB's decision to ditch the traditional Union Jack and replace it with a new diverse pink and purple design. It's red, fright and blue, next on The Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail to, her. Yeah, we're absolutely. Supposed to it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong.
Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to the talk. Team GB's diverse rebrand of the Union Jack for the upcoming Olympics has been met with a fierce backlash from sports fans and legends alike. The agency tasked with designing the kit claimed it needed to find a way to refresh the colour palette in a way that was flexible and ownable. It insisted that although the red, white and blue colours were synonymous with Great Britain, they were far from unique, adding that Team GB should be appealing to a new generation of sports fans. The decision has been slammed, with designers accused of defacing the flag that connects us with past Olympic glories and unifies Brits up and down the country. Football legend Peter Shilton was dismayed at the decision, bemoaning that nothing is sacred these days in the UK. The move follows Nike's controversial decision to update the red and white St George's Cross to purple on the back of England's home kit for the upcoming Euros. Look. I really liked the 2012 Olympic Games colours, but they did have the red, white, and blue. Um, you know, I don't. The, what I see happening here is brands mm. getting the opportunity to rebrand what is a national emblem. Mm. Fine, brand the kit, and I support Arsenal every season. We get a new kit, oh, but they don't. They, 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 they don't you're an Arsenal. Ugh. You lost they don't, Arsenal. Listen, they, lost Arsenal. They, don't, Arsenal. You don't change, you don't mess with certain things. They they carry too much history. You know, they've got an opportunity to create a whole kit all the different types of track suits and everything, but you don't mess with the flag. And that's really what this is about. So look, ultimately, it's they another, just it's another storm in a teacup. They tea just cup, need but... guidance. Here's the thing, they need guidance because I understand the commercial appeal of like, you know, jazzing up a uniform, fine. Here are the rules. You need to have the Union Jack as is, and it has to take up at least a third of, of whatever <laughs> kit you're designing. No, no defacing, no colors, no extra. Union Jack, a third of it, and everything else, you can have a tap dancing monkey if you want Correct. to, next does, to it. I do, do not that? care, but we need to see the Union Jack and no, then whatever the rules. It needs to be red, white, and blue. None of this pink Union and purple Jack. nonsense. It has to be exactly the Union Jack. Rainbow. You wouldn't replace, like, I don't know, the Saudi flag with a mango, right? Or, like, do something. Like, you wouldn't do this with any other flag. Just keep it, because that could be the Chilean flag. Literally. And I, I wouldn't know the difference. It could, it it could like be Great it could be lots of flags. And I was intrigued by the wording from the... Was it from the agency? We need to attract a new generation of sports fans. Yeah. So that's just an argument uh, to change the flag. They're just... They've literally there was, just um, changed the flag. There was a famous incident, you may all recall, uh, in... Uh, I think it was about 1990, uh, 1991, after Margaret Thatcher had resigned as Prime Minister and she was touring the, the Tory Airways. party conference stalls and British Airways had models of their new plane design where they'd got rid of the Union Jack because they were a global airline. So each tail, tail uh, symbol was kind of the colours of the world. You know, some reflected the South African flag, for example. And she famously put her handkerchief over the tail and <laughs> obviously got worldwide publicity. Yeah, yeah. Immediately, uh, these tail fins were withdrawn. Having said all that, I'm quite relaxed. I'm quite relaxed about that cross of St. George by Nike. I'm quite relaxed about the Union Jack. We know that our athletes will carry a Union Jack when they win their gold medals at the Olympics. They'll carry a proper Union Jack. It'll probably have the Team GB logo on it and they'll celebrate like that. There's nothing wrong with playing with a symbol. Particularly, I think it shows the strength of the symbol. The fact that if you change the colours and mess around with it, people still know that's the cross Absolutely of St. George. And I thought that. Gareth Southgate put it well when he said, actually, when you watch an England player play, you watch him or her punch the three lines They look like Chilean pride. tap dancers. Yeah, but they, they weren't the messing three with the three lines. Pride. Exactly. So they haven't you know, messed I mean, with the you, three lines. I well, I, you, you pay homage there to the Conservative Party's last good leader. And, and she was right. She protected, protected the flag. Yes, yeah, so and look what the Tory party have done with their logo. They totally messed that up. They turned it into a green tree. Where did that get us? Can I, I ask, ask what, does made it flexible, like what does flexible and ownable mean? What does, what does that even mean? Why, why is there why any is it more ownable why is there flex purple? Exactly, why is there any flexibility in the... If you're a design company, when they went, can you do us a logo, please, Gov? And they went, yeah, of course we can. We've got yeah. loads here in Shoreditch. We can sit around our big <laughs> oak desk, which costs more than, you know, the average wage does, and uh, we'll, we'll design it for you. At what point did they go, I know what we'll do, we'll redesign the flag. Wouldn't you go, it's a bit of a risk, isn't it? Redesign 
design them. That's what it's all about. We, would we design them? Mind, mind you, this would never work in the US. Americans are so crazy over their flag. They'd be like, US. That is yeah, a would good be right. Would, this would never work anywhere well, else. Of course, you're British and say this doesn't bother me. It's, keep, it's keep, bastardization. Keeping on the topic of sport, and we've got the Euros this summer. Now, there's been a bit of a change of environment for football fans because you can now legally smoke cannabis oh, God. in Germany. Ah. So all our football fans heading over there, they've been warned of the extra strength okay. German beer and the size of those huge, what are they called, those big beer? Um, Steins. The Steiners. Yeah. How did now you know they can that? Go, Ash. They can have a Steiner and a Stoner before a game. I'm really worried. So, we talk about extra strength beer. What about extra super, you know, extra strength super skunk? That will really, really knock them out. Also, I don't, anyway, I'm not a, a Isn't it smoker, just, but you know, that's not a, that I've ever got game is not the Germany. event to smoke weed. You smoke weed. It'd be quite amusing when... to watch England score a goal while half the stadium is baked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no what, it, what, what it's going to do, the, the positive, what they've down. done here, there's an effect because all of those fans that are off their face will look at the new flag and go, man, that's fantastic. Amazing. Yeah, so cool. the colours. Yeah. The colours are brilliant. Look, it's well, they will be a lot calmer in the stadium. They won't be able to smoke well, in the, the stadium. But the big, but the big fo problem calmer. in football is cocaine, not As we saw in the Euros in increase, increase our own country. So well. But on the subject yeah. of beer and Brits abroad, Spanish island Tenerife is waging war on sun-soaked, beer-chugging tourists, demanding they all go home. Residents of the largest Canary Island have blasted UK holidaymakers as a cancer, claiming drunken partygoers are ruining their slice of paradise. Boozy Brits have a rich history of enraging our continental cousins with Magaluf, Ibiza, and Uar Malia residents. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Long railing against low quality tourists who only come for the cheap beer, burgers, and sunbathing. Now, alongside a wave of anglophobic graffiti, Tenerife locals are demanding a tourist tax, restrictions on flights and a clampdown on foreigners buying houses. Residents are even taking to the streets in protest, hoping to put an end to the avalanche of vacationers that visit every year. Now, I sent this news story to a very wealthy friend of mine who's a lawyer who has indeed had his summer or oh, his Easter holiday in Tenerife, saying, are they referring uh, to you, which he took in good heart. Although it's quite amusing to see uh, the kind of rhetoric we sometimes use about immigrants in this country being turned on the British tourists going to Tenerife. I mean, I'm not sure how true this is. I mean, obviously, there is this graffiti, and there are these uh, Tenerifeans, Spanish people, saying... Uh, we don't want these tourists. And we do have a bad reputation. Do you remember Prague was the stag yeah, capital yeah, yeah. for Britain and yeah. so on? And uh, then it was the Baltic states. I mean, we don't seem to have this great reputation behaving abroad. We've just been talking about the European Championship. Everyone's always on the edge of their seat. How are the Brits going to behave? I'll tell you what, Ed, I, I think these, um, the, the, whoever these locals are, uh, and they're only locals and they only live there because of the Brits. I mean, let's cut to this. I said it before the break. Uh, Tenerife is essentially just a tip. It's just a volcanic... <laughs> A pile of nonsense. Oh, really. you're going to get <laughs> if, 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 you, on that. if you remove the Brits, and I'm not just talking, of course, nobody wants drunken meathead dodgepots mooching around, vomiting in your front garden. I think we all understand that. But broadly speaking, the infrastructure is there. The biggest, the only real industry of Tenerife is only there because Brits go there. And we're looking at holiday next week, and one of the considerations was Tenerife uh, because it's got it's nicely laid out. It's only laid out like that because of Brits and the occasional and you German. Yeah, but look, they've got to be careful yeah. what they wish for. You look what happened when you had um, Sharm El Sheikh booming tourist industry, and then they had the bombs go off and no one visits, yep. and they're begging for visitors to come back. And if those yeah, places become point. desolated, they'll be begging, begging for Brits But back. also, isn't this part of the tradition that that's what Brits do when they go abroad, that they do the wet, the wet T-shirt contest, the, the girls sort of wander around the town in, in yeah. basically no clothes and stuff? Thing is, I live in central London. I get quite fed up, I'll say it, I get quite fed up every summer of the Japanese and Chinese and American tourists descending in hordes across my city. But you don't tell tourists... Oh, imagine to go... what it's like being in Parliament. You don't, tell tourists, to go... <laughs> you don't tell tourists to go home. It's just not on. Tourists, and the tourists well, are a I think cancer. That, tourists tourists are part of life. I, I appreciate that, but we should not mm. allow people to go and ruin the good name of the Great Britain by getting drunk and... What good like, name? Well, no, but they, <laughs> this is what <laughs> Brits have do abroad. It's not acceptable. And you Our good name it. is based so, on so, going abroad and uh, getting well, drunk. Well, that's what they do. Absolutely not. They get burnt. People getting plastered without going to the Irish David Cameron was photographed in Ibiza. He wasn't yeah, wearing, wearing good name. But the thing is, 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 
I bet he was wearing a towel around yeah. him and changing on we, the beach. We wouldn't, we wouldn't appreciate it if the roles were reversed. I do, yes, of course, the local economy depends on British tourists and all of that, but it's not asking for much to not get completely Right, uh, well, I am drunk. going straight off to the House of Lords to spray paint tourists go home to get my own back. Anyway, coming up, <laughs> doctors demand drastic action to combat Britain's obesity crisis. It has 10 million hooked on junk food. It costs the NHS 58 billion quid a year. Should eating addictions be classed as, as dangerous as drink and drugs? We're going to debate that next on The Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho, so you? <laughs> <Just Yeah. laughs> Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, did fail to, her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to it was have another moved on from era. that. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to The Talk. Damning new figures have revealed that one in 20 patients are being forced to wait up to four weeks to see their GP. The number of Brits facing lengthy waits of a month or more has skyrocketed by 38% in the last year. In some parts of the country, the proportion of patients waiting a month to see their GP is more than double the national average. The Vale of York in the northeast has seen the highest rise in waiting times, jumping a staggering 79%. Bury in Greater Manchester has seen a 74% increase, while in East uh, Leicestershire and Rutland, uh, they have also seen a 69% increase. The Liberal Democrats, who commissioned the research, called the figures a grim postcode lottery. The government insists it's committed to improving access to GPs, hailing their two-year £645 million recovery plan as a major investment into primary care services. Well, it's pretty clear that primary care is broken. Um, it's almost impossible to get, your, to, get your, to get hold of a 
named specific GP. I don't think any of us have a specific GP anymore. You can sort of ring at eight o'clock in the morning and wait and wait and wait and get to see a GP or get a, they make you triage it and then they make you send photographs of various parts of your body and then someone will... Are you sure you're calling your local <laughs> GP at home? Yeah. Someone will... Communication. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you sure you haven't been hacked? Does this person have where a studio? I, where I am in central London, you have to send a photograph of the offending body part or the offending... Uh, well, it depends, health, depends on your definition uh, of offending. ...health issue um, that you want... body part, frankly. <laughs> well, exactly. ..that you want, that you want uh, healthcare treatment with and then someone will call you back later that day. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, we're taking the... I'm if just you saying, have, like... If you just let me finish, if you have oh, a poorly... That's our first just let me finish of the show. Yeah. It is, it is. Um, I was just trying to make my point. Um, <laughs> if you have a poorly child, you might get a call back a little bit sooner. But, I mean, I'm just making the point that when I was um, a child, we had a family doctor. Yes. And they would actually I had make... Dr Burroughs. Yeah, and they, they would actually make home visits. They would, at the end of the day, I know it's tough on GPs, I know they have a lot of work, but a lot of the time they're, in, they're only in three or four days a week, if that. A lot of the time they're working from home. They're doing Zoom appointments. They're doing everything online. It just isn't, <laughs> it isn't the way it used to be. In fact, it's... my GP uh, was the same GP as Tommy Cooper's. Oh, okay. Wow, you really went up in the world. That. It's interesting really? you say when you, were ch when you were a child. <laughs> just like that. That's a great... It, it's an, it's an great important point, point because things have changed. You know, the population, 10 million people have come to Britain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've had a huge expansion of the population. Yep. Secondly, there's another thing about individual responsibility. It feels like everything is being put onto the state. Recently, we were talking about mental health. Suddenly, there's a huge increase in people needing mental health. So, I think people's perception of what the state should be doing mm. uh, and taking... We've taken away a huge amount of personal responsibility. And you, oh, you were in the, in the 90s as a child. Yeah, I had Dr Williams. I remember us having the family doctor. But also, you know, you wouldn't just run to the GP for no, anything. Certainly not. Yeah. I, never also, I mean, look, the GPs were working a five-day week, James. That is, that does actually make a big but look, difference. I mean, look, there's well, no way forward because if you go to A and E, as we learned yesterday on yesterday's show, then, you then A and E is in crisis. Yeah, exactly. You then um, die because you wait too long and nobody treats you. How about this? Let's stop uh, complaining about the NHS if we're not willing to do anything about it. Seriously, because we keep having similar conversations. The NHS is broken. We can't see GPs. We can't get to get to the A and E. All of that. And then when, once we actually talk about reforming it and saying let's let's focus on good quality patient care and clinical outcomes it's we want to become america the nh the tories want to sell off the nhs i calculated how much i pay in taxes to the nhs and that would get me a good healthcare insurance in the us where i don't have to wait three weeks to see a gp okay there are places around the world that don't actually have to fork out as much money as we do that get better care how about let's focus on that enough of oh but this is but we know there are problems with the nhs we can't avoid it right but if we're not willing to do anything to change it i'm so sick of hearing about it's it. it's also worth enough it's worth saying as well the the, the lib dems your party, Ed. The Lib Dems, every couple of weeks, come up with a survey yeah. of, like, why everything's terrible. And clearly there are massive problems. And you mentioned a &E, a friend of mine's mother was admitted on Saturday for a really serious issue um, and was 36 hours that's waiting appalling. in yeah. a and mm -hmm. in, I mean, that's in, in totality. Unfeasible. Completely unacceptable. However, there are stories around the country of people who do still ring the doctor and get an appointment next. I've never known how it That works. shouldn't be the Some standard, people, though. And those, those, those areas are probably areas that haven't been inundated with huge, huge population. Growth. You can't import 700,000 people a year unless you're putting the money into service. And then scratch your head and exactly. say, yeah. why is there a kid? And none of the main parties are talking yeah. about this. No, no one wants to admit exactly. the real problem. Well, I mean, I think that is slightly uh, dog whistle politics there because obviously quite a lot of the immigration we get are students coming here for higher education. We also need doctors. Can I just finish? Well, I'm just saying. Channeling Martin and Emma here. <laughs> okay, uh <-huh. laughs> Many of them are students who we need for our economy. Many of whom are young, so don't necessarily need to see the doctor. What? Thank you very much, Esther. I young do need people to see the doctor don't need too, doctors. You know? We're not importing 82-year-old arthritic <laughs> geriatrics. <laughs> okay. And secondly, a lot of these people who come to this country pay their taxes, and indeed, quite a lot of them are qualified doctors. In fact, if you go into any NHS or indeed GP surgery, you will find immigrants serving you. It's well, not shock horror. It's shock more horror. people. It is. You're you basically need... saying you can't use the NHS because there are too many immigrants. No, and what I'm saying is if you have more people, there will, there will, you need Greater more resources, pressures. and we're not putting the resources there. It's, and that's it's, what's, it's what's simple math, if, Lord Vasey. It's, 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 it's simple math. How, anyway, unsurprisingly, how the system is unsurprisingly, Lord Vasey is wrong again. <laughs> In more NHS stress. Britain's obesity crisis has intensified to such a degree that doctors are pushing for food addiction to be classed as dangerous and al as alcoholism and drug addiction. 10 million of us are now feared to be hooked on junk food despite knowing the serious harm it causes, costing the NHS an extraordinary £58 billion every year. 
The UK is eating its way to become Europe's fattest country by 2030, with 37% of adults classed as obese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fast food is blamed for a catalogue of killer conditions, conspiring to make the UK one of the sickest on earth. Next month, medics and nutritionists from across the world will push for the World Health Organization to categorize addiction to ultra-processed food as a substance use disorder. First described in 1958, food addiction is characterized by cravings and compulsion, being human, with the most triggering foods including pizza, chocolate, crisps, biscuits, and ice cream. Welcome to being a woman on your period. Um, Oh my there is, God, I'm I can't sorry. It's, you just it's, said it's that. true. I'm sorry. Women during certain times of the month have hormonal That's a changes meme. and we have cravings. You've so just become it, a meme. I, I, well, it, <laughs> it's, it's a reality. I'm sorry. I know you're not a woman, so you probably don't know this, but you probably have dealt with women and have like <laughs> to toss them chocolates to be like to stave off the anger. Um, there's no objective definition for the word addiction. So I don't even know what the, how you can medicalize this if the, the, like, there's no <laughs> medical definition of addiction. And secondly, if we're talking about obesity, Let's talk about diet and exercise. Let's talk about actually incentivizing people that are overweight to take some pers like to take some control of their own health. Mm -hmm. If you are overweight, I'm sorry, you might have to pay up front at, at, at a GP. Guess what? Oh, I know, pay for your own health care. Take control of your own, of your own body. I I'm tired of having, of constantly skirting around this issue of people not taking control of their own diet. I'm sorry, it's impossible. It when possible. I go into it my supermarket, possible. All the chocolates are laid out in front of me, and I have to is buy them. Is your name them. on them? I have to buy is them your name because on of them? the marketing uh -huh. and the stuff they put in those chocolates. Okay. The no, minute but I've I think eaten there one, is a serious more. point here about uh, what James was saying in the previous item about the fact that we are um, that people taking responsibility for their Thank own health. You. Look, it, we, by pathologizing it and calling it an addiction, you're basically saying to people, "Oh, you've got a, you've got, you're yeah, labeling you no them. You, you have a condition." Mm. We all know, we all know that that high levels of sugar, salt, and fat are Moorish. They're Moorish. That's yeah. what that's what it means. Things like eating a McDonald's feels good at the time, then an hour later you're absolutely ravenous. Well, it doesn't feel good at the time. But I mean, it's, 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 the, it's very, very simple. Obesity is caused by eating too much. It is, if you go to sub-Saharan Africa where people do not have enough calories, you do not find obese people. <laughs> simple. And the That's answer uh... is, eat less, Move more, eat more fruit and vegetable, no, but I get see, outside, see. do more exercise, stop staring at your screen, Thank cut you. your alcohol Thank consumption, you. and take responsibility. I come from the background. I, it's I not train simple, every but it is clear. Day. Every yes. day, not even a rest day. No, I do have rest days as I get older, but the, the real, reality is, is I think um, these, you know, a healthy mindset is built in from a young age. You know, yep. I, knew, I knew, I was lucky that I knew I wanted to join the Royal Marines at a young age, and I've always been in a training, sporty environment. So it's part of what I do. I also like drinking. When I get to the weekend, I have to go to the pub or I have to have a drink, a bottle of wine at home. It's just that's my way to relax. And th that is the trained behavior. It's called moderation. For, for decades. Yep. And I think it needs to start at school. And one of the things I really, really concerns me, and I've said this before on this program, looking around schools for my children, is, especially state schools, is the difference between the ones that have sporting facilities and the ones that just have nothing or aren't interested to it. And it needs to come from the government that we ensure that there is more access to sport from a young age to get those yeah. positive... Isn't, isn't, that, I, that isn't positive the question, though, that, that, that comes up come with this, parents. that no matter how, um, how much we can all agree with, yeah, personal responsibility, I talk about it all the time, you know, you don't have to eat that pie, you don't have to have that processed meal, you don't have to, Ed, have that extra uh, Easter egg, etc. I do, actually. However... No, Matt Chorley <laughs> made me eat a full Easter egg. Yeah. Yeah. Chor uh, Chor is a Chorley is a peddler of confectionery, if ever I saw one. We've known it for years. But the point is, the NHS always seems to say, or government research seems to say, whatever the reasons, doesn't matter, it, it can't just be undone, so therefore, let's treat it, because it actually makes sense economically to I treat send it. send them to a camp. Rather than, yeah. Yeah, yeah, rather than try and fight and squabble and debate as to where but it comes But the biggest pressure on the NHS right now is obesity. Correct, correct. Forget COVID, it's yeah. obesity. I think that's, uh, to, well, that makes the point that we should bring back fact shaming. Anyway, coming up, <laughs> no. Slippers and Werther's Originals are st uh, stamped with security tags as stores battle a wave of silver shoplifters aged over 60. It's Grand Theft Auto next on the talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, oi, treat girl.
And JK Rowling says, let's just be honest. That's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed it was to another era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Talk. Now, one of the elderly's favourite sugary treats, the old Werther's Original, is now having to be protected from thieves and not the kind you might expect. Food supermarkets are reporting a dramatic rise in pensioners shoplifting, leading stores to security tag items including classic sweets and cosy slide-on slippers. Last year, 301 people aged over 60 were charged with stealing from shops. That's up 8% in six years, leading one retail expert to warn that stereotypes about only young people nicking things are outdated. Age UK found one in three over 70s cut food and drink spending by more than a third due to the cost of living crisis. Can I just say, you dirty, thieving, blue rinsed, shoplifting dodgepots. They are <laughs> everywhere. They are among us. They get out there pretending to be frail with a little frame. <laughs> Uh, Mooching around in funny slippers and woolen socks and little hat. Oh, look funny. at her. There's Muriel. So, there she that's, goes that's, again. That's She's trousering pork chops as she goes. Yeah, you're describing Ed. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I think there's always... Yes, there's always been thievery. Uh, there's no age barrier. That is true, exactly. Who <laughs> want to nick stuff. There's always it's been... It's a really good reminder. Do you remember the that. people who uh, raided the Hatton Garden... Uh, jewelers, they were they all were old pensioners, kids, weren't they? and there is—it's a very good were. point. There is this kind of veneration of the elderly that if you're over a certain age, you must just be a good person. No, you could be a terrible old lag who's carried out armed robberies all your life, absolutely, and still has that mentality. Of course, Why assume the old don't? Are you nick guys stuff? admitting now that sixty years old? Who's sixty years old? <laughs> Are you admitting that 60 years old? Not even 40 years old. For I know, you are. I know. Uh, you're not. I, listen, I love this I idea that the minute, uh... the minute you turn 60, all you're interested in is cozy slide on slippers and Werther's original. Are they really tagging Werther's original? I'm old enough to live in a retirement home. I, wow. I can believe a that. retirement village, 55 plus. Wow. Wow. But wow. you're not going to be nicking Werther's originals. But I think the wider point here is that <laughs> there does seem to be an, it seems to be open to 
anybody to steal anything at any age group because the, the police aren't getting involved exactly. in prosecuting yeah. people. You know, they seem to be absent. They're too busy policing thought crimes, perhaps. And frankly, well, if you were going to go for a, a, a bigger bag of something, you'd go for Rebels, wouldn't you? Not, who'd stow, well, I'm going to go out thieving. What about some toffee? No, you'd go for a king-size Snickers. Oh, no, 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 no. Family box of Maltesers. <laughs> No, that's 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 no, you can't run that, fast oh, with that. You she's can't done run this with before. That. You rattle. She's done you this rattle. before. You can't rattle. You can't nick Maltesers from a shop. Yeah, they rattle. rattle. Trust me. <laughs> there we go. All right, on that uh, <laughs> note of... Why the pause? Why the Why long the... pause? That's, that Ed, is called a dramatic pause. <laughs> that's how we build it up to the best feature of the day. It's time for Small Talk. <laughs> And I'm going to bring you straight back to Granny's. This is the <laughs> Granny <laughs> Trolley. Obsessed. Remember the basket on wheels that once upon a time, back in the day, oh, yes. there it is. Uh, old People folk use those use it for shopping. Yeah. Apparently, there's been reported use. rise in Gen Zers picking up the handles as they ditch traditional rucksacks and shoulder bags in favour of the shopping trolley. Essentially, retail Shop experts believe trolley. younger generations are more evidence-driven and appreciate the trolley can carry more while saving your back. Uh, you can actually pay a few quid for these. Well, that's things. a bit different. 60 quid, apparently, from a Jet Marina white striped and funky black one. No, that's different. That's not a shopping trolley. That's That's like going on holiday. That's, you know, Louis Vuitton. Very, it's a very practical thing, though, the shopping trolley, wasn't it? Louis Vuitton would never do Especially that. Can, oh, I, tell, can I just not. cross stories here? When I worked in Iceland, <laughs> when I was at school... You're talking the shop, not the country. The shop, not the country. I can remember a prolific older shoplifter coming in, and what she would do is fill her trolley, her little tartan trolley, with a load of stuff. Then she'd stick some frozen chips on the yep. top, and I'd be there at the you know, the till, because that's, you know, what I, uh, one of the jobs I did, and she'd lift up the lid of her shopping trolley, she'd go, just the frozen chips, love. Yeah. And I'd be so intimidated, because she looked a bit worrying, I'd just charge her for frozen chips. And a <sighs> couple of months later, she got collared. She had about 300 quid for <laughs> Is that, it's, I think they do it for the thrill result. Do you think so? Yeah. She had no being world old, as originals, being old, being old gets boring. Ed, you've got the next one. Oh, all right, then. Netflix fuels surge in upper-class fashion. So I actually watched this. This is the Guy Ritchie series, The Gentleman. I wasn't going to watch it because it's just the same old Guy Ritchie, but it is, unfortunately, actually quite good. So I hear. And obviously, these high-end TV productions now, they spend gazillions on them, and they do take the wardrobes very seriously, and everyone is very well-dressed. So apparently, uh, traditional outfitters like Cordings or Piccadilly say there's been a massive positive effect. Everyone's wearing the Peaky Blinder caps, the tweed jackets, etc., etc. Where is your cap? My cap is... Well, my beanie's upstairs, but my cap is at home. Yeah. I'm always suspicious when they say there's... You know, I mean, that's on... You know, it, it came out about a month ago or something like yeah. that, The Gentleman. I know a lot of people who are watching it. But do you suddenly have lots of people go look at it and go, oh, is Vinnie Jones wearing a funky hat? I'll yes, just Google you do. that. And then I'll go to the shop and buy it. Really? Yes, you, you get inspired. Do. Yeah. Like I, you, so, you get inspired from But to the, to the degree that it would be almost yes. epidemic. But Ian, it's, it's, you're speaking of someone who hasn't changed their wardrobe for 40 years, but believe me, there I, are people. Believe me, my tailor would beg to differ. The influencers are absolutely key to advertisers. And you know, influ the influencing market is killing conventional TV. 100%. You know? yeah. But, you know, it's kill taking advertisers away because you can put, you can stick something on somebody, and you can gain the same. Yeah, yeah. on, on their social media. So, uh, Emma, you've got the next one. Okay, this is the National Trust, and it's vegan scones. I'm going to say yeah. scones, and that's what I say. Yeah. The National Bad Trust news. has been forced to defend its vegan scone recipe in the face of claims that its afternoon tea has secretly gone woke. MP Bill Cash was one of many taking aim at the Trust's new recipe, saying, it makes me wonder what will happen next. Will they stop selling Madeira cake because of historical events in Madeira? A National Trust spokesperson said that while some of its published recipes may differ, the plain and fruit scones in its tea rooms have been dairy-free for years. I mean, exactly. Point, isn't it? Why do they offer both? both? Yeah. I mean, no, vegan, this so is vegan the most scones. annoying story in history because the National Trust is doing absolutely the right thing. Greg's Guess what? Advertises its donuts and says suitable for vegans. There's not a Daily Telegraph pile on. I suggest you follow Celia Richardson, the head of communications for the National Trust. She trolls the Telegraph right back on Twitter. What the Telegraph do, they come up with these ridiculous stories as clickbait. They are nonsense. Yeah, it is nonsense because also... all a vegan scone is, is basically it means that the cream, I'm trying to think which bits of it will not be vegan. They use it margarine means instead the cream, of butter. The yeah, the cream is dairy free. Also advertising, when you go for a scone, <laughs> when you eat any pastry, when you whip your chops around a cream horn, it's I not the pastry you're going for, is it? It's the cream. And with that, it's the cream and jam. 
It's enough of you. But it's dairy it. free and has been for years. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yeah. I've got something a bit more serious here. James, yeah, shots. Does anyone, anyone good ball sports? Cricket? Mm. Tennis, yeah. I like to watch that tennis. Well, the, football, that, that, but that's for the football. We now know why the re there's a, re a scientific reason. Scientists have discovered that the reason some of us are more likely to fumble or catch or miss hit a tennis ball is because Trinity College Dublin has conducted experiments to show that the speed of visual perception varies, meaning that some people can see more information every second than others. Okay. Scientists use a flicker test, which flashes a light at increasing speed until it is blinking so fast that it appears completely still. And when asked patients or participants when the lights had stopped flicking, for some of them, they saw a steady light at just 35 blinks, whilst others saw a flashing light at more than 60. So wow. if you want to be a F1 racing driver yeah. or you want to be a really good cricketer, you need to be in That's a, you were a ro You were a Royal Marine, James. I mean, is there, there must be a correlation well, I couldn't there. see the bullets. No, well, I was yeah. going to get... Yeah, you could see, <laughs> you could see Matey pop his head over the rock down there in the desert. Uh, yeah, I mean, hand-eye hand -eye coordination can be trained, but I do... You know, I've, I, I'll give you an example. You know, I've always been a bowler in cricket, and I've, I've always get out bowled. You know, I always yeah. see that ball late. And I do wonder whether other people, sometimes they just go and they could be hung over and they could just whip that oh, ball 100%. away. I, I mean, think people, I have, so. people have natural sporting ability and yeah. it's probably based on some biological advantage. Lionel Messi, for example, is Lionel. considered a great... F Lionel is considered a great sportsman because he has this incredible Messiah. spatial awareness, Indeed. which is a natural gift. Okay. Esther, you've yeah. got the last one. Thanks for that fact, and Lionel Messi. Lionel. Anyway, so Croydon has been named the beauty capital of Britain. <laughs> 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 Research found one Croydon. in 30... <laughs> That's why I'm laughing, but this is also not true. One in 32 <laughs> residents in the South London area are employed in the beauty industry, more than four times the national oh. average of one in every uh, 150, which shows that people in Croydon need a lot of help. No, if, it's if because <laughs> Kate Moss comes from Croydon. I mean, I And have, your hairdo I, is called the Croydon I facelift. Ma'am, ma'am, I have I have family in Croydon. These these cheekbones are natural. I have family in Croydon um, who are very beautiful, but I also see <laughs> other people in Croydon. I can completely understand why this market. Well, I can tell you, Esther, they're going to see you tomorrow, and you better run. <laughs> You better I run. I take the bus. I don't take my car there because then the wheel will be missing. And I'm like, oh, what happened? They're in Croydon, don't worry. So, it's, got yeah. a, it's got a lovely, it's got a nice Ikea over there in Croydon. So, you know. I was there, the I was one there one at the weekend. Thing. That is, uh, there you go, you see. That's all we've got time for on The Talk this evening. I'm Ian Collins. Thank you to our panellists, uh, Ed Vasey, Emma Wolf, Esther Craigie and James Glancy. Join me again tomorrow afternoon at three. Until then, good night. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen.